In this video, I'm going to name every NBA team's biggest draft bust ever. It doesn't matter if a player was technically drafted by another team on draft night. I only considered what they did with the team they started their careers with. I hope you enjoy. Atlanta Hawks, Dermar Johnson. Johnson was a member of the infamously terrible 2000 NBA draft. He was a 6'8 small forward who could shoot the three ball at a respectable rate, but his time with the Hawks was very short and nearly fatal. After two disappointing seasons to start his career, Johnson was in a near fatal car car crash before the start of his third year. To his credit, he fought back from near paralysis to play a few more years in the NBA, but it's safe to say Atlanta had more in mind than just two subpar years for this former sixth overall pick. Boston Celtics, Eric Montross, a seven-footer out of UNC who was taken ninth overall by Boston in 1994 and lasted just two seasons with the team before spending the rest of his disappointing NBA career as a journeyman. Montross never found his way in the league and considering his lack of shooting ability, wouldn't have even made it in today's NBA. But luckily for for him, back in the 90s NBA, team still had a fetish for trotting out seven-foot stiffs every game simply because they were tall. Brooklyn Nets, Dennis Hopson. Hopson was a phenomenal scorer at Ohio State, and the Nets drafted him third overall with the idea that he could continue that scoring dominance in the NBA. Safe to say, though, Hopson never came close to matching his college excellence. He played just three years with the Nets and never shot the ball well. He provided next to nothing as a rebounder, passer, or defender. He was also known to be a little soft. He would actually go on to win a ring with Chicago as a bench warmer in 1991, but there's no way around the fact that he stunk. Charlotte Hornets, Adam Morrison. Much like Hobson, Morrison was a legendary college scorer who was drafted third overall, proceeded to play horribly with his drafted team, then won rings as a bench warmer before falling out of the league entirely. Morrison's rookie season was easily his best, which tells you just how bad the rest of his short career was. He was supposed to be a knockdown shooter, but he couldn't shoot. Then he got hurt. All in all, he played in just 122 games with the Bobcats, proving once again how shitty of an owner might Michael Jordan is. Chicago Bulls, Jay Williams. The Bulls drafted Williams second overall in 2002, following his outstanding career at Duke. He was supposed to be the point guard of the future, leading the quote-unquote baby Bulls to success in the post-Jordan era. Unfortunately, it was not to be. Williams only played one year with the Bulls, an up-and-down rookie season that wasn't horrible, but not anything to write home about either. That offseason, he was in a motorcycle crash that gave him career-ending injuries and also violated the terms of his contract. Just an unfortunate scene all around. Thankfully, he survived and went on to have a successful career at ESPN. Cleveland Cavaliers, Anthony Bennett. For my money, Bennett is the biggest draft bust in NBA history, not just the Cavaliers. In all my years as a basketball fan, I've never seen any player, let alone a first overall pick, look so out of place on an NBA court. Bennett literally did nothing well, a fact that became apparent very quickly to Cleveland, who dropped him after just one season in a trade to Minnesota. Bennett would play parts of four seasons with four different teams before falling out of the league entirely in 2017. It's hard to be worse than this guy was. Dallas Mavericks, Bill Garnett. No, he's not related to Kevin Garnett. How do I know this without Googling it? Well, I'm a genius, that's how. Unfortunately for Dallas, not only was Bill not related to Kevin, he was also the exact opposite of KG as a player, which is to say, he sucked major ass. He lasted just two seasons in Dallas, mostly as a backup part-time starter at the power forward and center positions. While every team needs these types of players, you don't draft a guy fourth overall with the hope of him becoming a role player. Garnett would last just four years in the NBA overall before his career ended. Denver Nuggets, Nikolo Skidashvili. I shit you not, a huge reason why Denver drafted Skida fifth overall in 2002 was because he made 10 threes in a row during a workout. Denver thought they were getting a more athletic version of Dirk Nowitzki, but unfortunately for them, once the game started, Skida forgot how to play basketball. He lasted just two and a half seasons in Denver before being traded away. He lasted just one and a half more seasons in the league after leaving Denver, mostly as a bench warmer. To understand how bad this guy sucked. He took 626 shots in his career and scored just 507 points. Yeah, garbage. Detroit Pistons, Darko Milicic. Speaking of early 2000s European players who were drafted way too highly due to hearsay and teams being desperate to find the next Dirk, Darko Milicic famously went second overall to Detroit in 2003, ahead of Hall of Famers like Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Bosh. As we all know, Darko barely played as Detroit ascended into becoming champions in spite of their wasted draft pick. Darko lasted just two and a half seasons in Detroit before finally being traded. He scored just 152 points on 174 shot attempts with Detroit and will forever be known as one of the biggest busts ever. Golden State Warriors, Chris Washburn. Washburn was a member of the infamous 1986 draft class that saw multiple top draft picks succumb to drugs. The Warriors picked Washburn third overall despite some off-court issues in college, hoping he could finally realize his potential, but it was not to be. Washburn played just 43 games with Golden State before being traded. Overall, he 
lasted just two years in the league before being permanently banned due to his drug addiction. 222 career points is all he has to show for his time in the NBA. Houston Rockets, Pat Riley. Pat Riley? The Pat Riley? Yes, that Pat Riley makes this list. Before he was one of the greatest coaches and executives in NBA history, Riley was the seventh overall pick in 1967 of the San Diego Rockets. The former University of Kentucky standout struggled once he got to the pros. He lasted just three seasons with San Diego, ending with more shot attempts than points and not really putting up much in the rebounds and assist departments. He later found a niche with the Lakers as a hustle role player, even winning a ring on the legendary 1972 squad, but that's far below what you expect out of a seventh overall pick. Indiana Pacers, Jonathan Bender. Another example of a prep to pro phenom gone bad. Bender was a 6'11 small forward who could handle the ball and shoot a little bit. He was essentially hyped up to be Kevin Durant before Kevin Durant, and Indiana was so enamored by his potential they took him fifth overall in 1999. Unfortunately for both Bender and Indiana, his entire NBA career would be hampered by repeated injuries and never really got off the ground. Indiana remained a contender in spite of Bender's injuries, which can only leave one to wonder how good they could have been had he panned out. Los Angeles Clippers, Michael Olawakandi. Olawakandi didn't start playing basketball until he was 18. He would go on to have one great year in college at a mid-major school, but everybody, especially the Clippers who held the number one pick in the year he was draft eligible, were enamored by his potential. There's that word again. In typical Clippers fashion, Olawakandi completely bombed and was a horrible player in his five years with LA. He never loved the game and was known to be lazy, but hey, he made almost 40 million in the league, so in the end, I guess he still won despite his incredible levels of incompetence. Los Angeles Lakers, Wayne Yates. It was tough to find a player for the Lakers, as throughout their history, they've either hit on their top picks or at the very least had their picks become decent pros. The one exception to this is Wayne Yates, who the Lakers took fifth overall in 1961 with the hopes of him providing much needed front court help to the legendary duo of Elgin Baylor and Jerry West. Unfortunately for LA, Yates completely flopped, playing just one NBA season and putting up terrible averages and efficiency. He finished his NBA career with just 72 points on 105 shots. Memphis Grizzlies, Hashim Tabit. Tabit is a two-fold draft bust, meaning not only was he terrible and didn't belong in the league, he was also drafted before several players who went on to become MVPs and first bout Hall of Famers, such as James Harden and Steph Curry. Even at the time, people were questioning to beat selection, and they were quickly proven right, as he lasted just one and a half seasons in Memphis before being traded. He was so inept offensively, he finished his Grizzlies career with nearly as many fouls, 235, as points, 261. I mean, there's really not much more to say than that. Stinky, stinky. Miami Heat, Michael Beasley. As somebody who watched Beasley at Kansas State, I have no idea how he didn't become a superstar in the NBA. He had all the tools to at least become a consistent 20 points per game score, but he just never put it all together. After being selected second overall in 2008, he had two meh seasons with Miami before being traded. A consistent pattern would then happen throughout Beasley's career. He would show flashes of brilliance in between long periods of terrible play. Miami even brought him back for a second stint in 2014 and 2015, but it didn't amount to anything. Disappointing he couldn't have a better career. Milwaukee Bucks, Robert Trailer. Trailer is really just a sad story all around. He battled weight issues throughout his life, which eventually ended way too prematurely at the age of 34 in 2011. His NBA career is most known for being the guy who was traded by Dallas to Milwaukee in exchange for Dirk Nowitzki on draft night in 1998. While Dirk would go on to become a legend, Trailer lasted just two years in Milwaukee, putting up meager numbers. He would bounce around the league for a few more years before playing overseas until his death. Minnesota Timberwolves, Johnny Flynn. Flynn will always be remembered most for being the guy the Timberwolves stupidly took over Steph Curry in 2009, despite already having taken a point guard in Ricky Rubio. Flynn actually had a somewhat respectable rookie year, but he declined quickly afterwards, lasting just 134 games with Minnesota before being traded. He would last just one more season afterwards in the NBA before playing overseas. New Orleans Pelicans, Austin Rivers. Rivers has gone on to have a long NBA career as a 3 and D type role player on some contending teams, but there's no way around the fact that his tenure with New Orleans was a disaster. He was taken 10th overall in 2012 and lasted just two and a half seasons with New Orleans before being traded to his dad's team in LA. New Orleans, for the most part, has done a pretty good job with their top picks, so even though Rivers isn't the worst player in the world, he's the unfortunate recipient of this honor. New York Knicks, Kevin Knox. Knox is a guy who is just really, really bad at everything, which makes you wonder how the hell he was taken ninth overall in 2018 by the Knicks. He would end up lasting three and a half seasons in the Big Apple before finally being traded to the Hawks. He has shot under 40% in every year of his career, and really the only thing he's good for is the occasional corner three. But make no mistake, this guy smells. I was honestly skeptical of Knox 
from day one, as the wrinkles on his forehead look like lips. This guy can literally blow you a kiss with his forehead. Disgusting. Oklahoma City Thunder, Mohamed Sene. Sene really had a fascinating career. Despite showing zero previous signs of being a good basketball player, he was taken 10th overall in 2006 by Seattle due to his quote-unquote potential, which is to say he was tall and could block some shots. It became apparent very quickly that Sene wasn't an NBA caliber player, and he finished his NBA career with just 103 points and 47 games played. I mean, how the hell does a team whiff this badly on a player? I'll never understand it. Orlando Magic, Mario Hazonia. Super Mario, as he's known, was yet another player drafted due to potential, but ended up just completely sucking ass his entire career. He had good athleticism, but really had no idea how to use it and always looked lost on the court. He was taken fifth overall in 2015 by Orlando and lasted just three years there before being traded. He would last just two more years in the league before going back overseas. But hey, at least he can tell his grandkids he once blocked LeBron, I guess. Philadelphia 76ers, Markel Fultz. Fultz remains a complete mystery to me. When a player is picked first overall, they usually had a notable college career that generated a lot of attention, but not Fultz. I don't ever remember him even being talked about. Still, Philly took him first overall in 2017 to pair with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, and it was a disaster. Fultz dealt with mysterious shoulder issues that completely ruined his shooting form. All in all, he appeared in just 33 games for Philly, finishing with more shot attempts than points. He's only been marginally better in Orlando, and I feel his time in the NBA is running out. Phoenix Suns, Dragon Bender. It should be illegal for a player this terrible to have such an awesome name, but nevertheless, he does. Throughout NBA history, teams have consistently taken risk in the draft on unproven foreign prospects due to potential, and Bender is another example of that. At no point in his four-year NBA career, including three with Phoenix after they picked him fourth overall in 2016, did he show anything resembling an NBA player. Really, the only thing this guy excelled at was looking like an off-brand Andrew Garfield. Gross. Portland Trailblazers, Sam Bowie. I feel bad for listening Bowie here, as he was actually a decent NBA player when healthy, but that's the thing. He was just another example of a long line of injury-prone Blazer centers who never lived up to their potential. But the real reason he makes this list is because, of course, he was picked ahead of Michael Jordan. People who say that's just hindsight don't know shit. Bowie literally missed two full seasons in college due to injuries while MJ was the best player in college basketball. Sure, Portland had Clyde Drexler, but he'd only played one year at that point. Simply put, there's no excuse for Portland to take Bowie over MJ, not in 1984, not now, and not ever. Sacramento Kings, Thomas Robinson. One of the easily forgotten draft busts, Robinson was drafted fifth overall by the Kings in 2012 and simply never found his footing in the pros. He was a classic tweener who couldn't shoot and really only excelled at rebounding. Sacramento traded him midway through his rookie year after he appeared in just 51 games with the team. Robinson would play five years in the NBA overall and was constantly on the move, playing for six teams. I feel like there was a good player in there somewhere, but he just never could put it together. San Antonio Spurs, Al Frederick Hughes. The Spurs were a tough decision to make because they almost never draft highly, and when they have, they've hit home runs, aka Tim Duncan and David Robinson. So the poor bastard who gets this honor is Al Frederick Hughes. Hughes was a phenomenal scorer in college and was drafted 14th overall by San Antonio in 1985 with the hopes of potentially becoming the next George Gervin. That didn't pan out. Hughes lasted just one NBA season and finished his career with more shot attempts than points. Tough break. Toronto Raptors, Rafael Arroyo. I promise I don't have anything against foreigners, but Arroyo was a complete scrub that somehow tricked the Raptors into taking him 8th overall in 2004. He was a truly terrible player. He stood at a towering 6'11", 280 pounds, and yet he finished his stint with Toronto with more shot attempts than points. He wasn't a good rebounder, he couldn't pass, and he didn't block any shots. He lasted just two years in Toronto before they cut bait. He hung on for one more shit year in Utah before being out of the NBA entirely. Utah Jazz, Dante Exum. I'm old enough to remember the Dante Exum hype when he was coming into the league. He was held up as an Australian Kobe, which is hilarious looking back considering how bad he ended up becoming. Utah took him fifth overall in 2014, but Exum struggled with shooting and dealt with repeated injuries that stunted his potential. He just never really put it together and never became anything more than a hustle player off the bench. He lasted four and a half seasons with Utah before finally being traded. He lasted one and a half more seasons with Cleveland before falling out of the league after 2021. He's currently playing overseas. Washington Wizards, Kwame Brown. One of the most famous draft busts and another that you can pin on Michael Jordan's incredibly awful talent evaluation skills. Brown was the first high schooler ever taken first overall and obviously failed to live up to that standard, which is a shame because if he had been drafted in the late first round or second round, his career would be seen as respectable. He lasted 12 years in the league, but Washington gave up on him after just four. He provided almost nothing offensively, but was a solid defender 
defender, but you don't draft a guy first overall to be a solid defender and nothing else. Congrats to him on his second career as a social media celebrity now, though.